Well, hello and welcome to day 301 of our daily Bible reading. We begin with prayer. Loving God, thank you for your word that guides us through every twist and turn in our lives. Amen. And today we are finishing up the book of Jeremiah, chapter 51, verse 54 through chapter 52, verse 34. Listen, a cry from Babylon, a great crashing from the land of the Chaldeans, for the Lord is laying Babylon waste and stilling her loud clamor. Their waves roar like mighty waters. The sound of their clamor resounds, for a destroyer has come against her, against Babylon. Her warriors are taken, their bows are broken, for the Lord is a God of recompense. He will repay in full. I will make her officials and her sages drunk, also her governors, her deputies, and her warriors. They shall sleep a perpetual sleep and never wake, says the king, whose name is the Lord of hosts. Thus says the Lord of hosts, the broad wall of Babylon shall be leveled to the ground, and her high gates shall be burned with fire. The peoples exhaust themselves for nothing, the nations only for fire and they have become weary. Jeremiah's command to Saraiah. The word that the prophet Jeremiah commanded Saraiah, son of Neriah, son of Messiah, when he went with King Zedekiah of Judah to Babylon in the fourth year of his reign. Saraiah was the quartermaster. Jeremiah wrote in a scroll all the disasters that would come on Babylon, all these words that are written concerning Babylon. And Jeremiah said to Sariah, When you come to Babylon, see that you read all these words and say, O Lord, you yourself threaten to destroy this place so that neither humans nor animals shall live in it, and it shall be desolate forever. When you finish reading this scroll, tie a stone to it and throw it into the middle of the Euphrates and say, Thus shall Babylon sink to rise no more, because of the disasters that I am bringing on her. Thus far are the words of Jeremiah. Chapter 52, The Destruction of Jerusalem Reviewed Zedekiah was 21 years old when he began to reign. He reigned 11 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Hamutal, daughter of Jeremiah of Libna. He did what was evil in the sight of the Lord just as Jehoiakim had done. Indeed, Jerusalem and Judah so angered the Lord that he expelled them from his presence. Zedekiah rebelled against the king of Babylon. And in the ninth year of his reign, in the tenth month, on the tenth day of the month, King Nebuchadrezzar of Babylon came with all his army against Jerusalem, and they laid siege to it. They built siege works against it all around. So the city was besieged until the eleventh year of King Zedekiah. On the ninth day of the fourth month, the famine became so severe in the city that there was no food for the people of the land. Then a breach was made in the city wall, and all the soldiers fled and went out from the city by night by the way of the gate between the two walls, by the king's garden, though the Chaldeans were all around the city. They went in the direction of the Araba, but the army of the Chaldeans pursued the king and overtook Zedekiah in the plains of Jericho, and all his army was scattered, deserting him. Then they captured the king and brought him up to the king of Babylon at Riblah in the land of Hamath, and he passed sentence on, them, on him. The king of Babylon killed the sons of Zedekiah before his eyes and also killed all the officers of Judah at Riblah. He put out the eyes of Zedekiah and bound him in fetters, and the king of Babylon took him to Babylon and put him in prison until the day of his death. In the fifth month, on the tenth day of the month, which was the nineteenth year of King Nebuchadrezzar, king of Babylon, Nebuzaradan, the captain of the bodyguard who served the king of Babylon, entered Jerusalem. He burned the house of the Lord, the king's house, and all the houses of Jerusalem. Every great house he burned down. 
all the army of the Chaldeans who were with the captain of the guard broke down all the walls around J Jerusalem. Nebuzaradan, the captain of the guard, carried into exile some of the poorest of the people and the rest of the people who were left in the city and the deserters who had defected to the king of Babylon, together with the rest of the artisans. But Nebuzaradan, the captain of the guard, left some of the poorest people of the land to be vine dressers and tillers of the soil. The pillars of bronze that were in the house of the Lord, and the stands and the bronze sea that were in the house of the Lord, the Chaldeans broke in pieces and carried all the bronze to Babylon. They took away the pots, the shovels, the snuffers, the basins, the ladles, and all the vessels of bronze used in the temple service. The captain of the guard took away the small bowls also, the fire pans, the basins, the pots, the lampstands, the ladles, and the bowls for libation, both those of gold and those of silver. As for the two pillars, the one sea, the twelve bronze bulls that were under the stands, which King Solomon had made for the house of the Lord, the bronze of all these vessels was beyond weighing. As for the pillars, the height of the one pillar was eighteen cubits, its circumference was twelve cubits, it was hollow, and its thickness was four fingers. Upon it was a capital of bronze, the height of the capital was five cubits, latticework and pomegranates, all of bronze, encircled the top of the capital, and the second pillar had the same, with pomegranates. There were ninety-six pomegranates on the sides. All the pomegranates encircling the latticework numbered one hundred. The captain of the guard took the chief priest, Sarea, the second priest, Zephaniah, and the three guardians of the threshold. From the city he took an officer who had been in command of the soldiers, seven men of the king's council, who were found in the city, the secretary of the commander of the army, who mustered the people of the land, and sixty men of the people of the land, who were found inside the city. Then Nebuzaradan, the captain of the guard, took them and brought them to the king of Babylon at Riblah. And the king of Babylon struck them down and put them to death at Riblah in the land of Hamath. So Judah went into exile out of its land. This is the number of the people whom Nebuchadrezzar took into exile. In the seventh year, 3,023 Judeans. In the eighteenth year of Nebuchadrezzar, he took into exile from Jerusalem 832 persons. In the twenty-third year of Nebuchadrezzar, Nebuzaradan, the captain of the guard, took into exile of the Judeans 745 persons. All the persons were 4,600. Jehoiakim favored in captivity. In the thirty-seventh year of the exile of King Jehoiakim of Judah, in the twelfth month, on the twenty-fifth day of the month, King Evil Merodach of Babylon, in the year he began to reign, showed favor to King Jehoiakim of Judah and brought him out of prison. He spoke kindly to him and gave him a seat above the seats of the other kings who were with him in Babylon. So Jehoiakim put aside his prison clothes, and every day of his life he dined regularly at the king's table. For his allowance, a regular daily allowance, was given him by the king of Babylon as long as he lived up to the day of his death. Titus chapter 3 Maintain Good Deeds Remind them to be subject to rulers and authorities, to be obedient, to be ready for every good work to speak evil of no one, to avoid quarreling, to be gentle, and to show every courtesy to everyone. For we ourselves were once foolish, disobedient, led astray, slaves to various passions and pleasures, passing our days in malice and envy, despicable, hating one another. But when the goodness and loving kindness of God our Savior appeared, he saved us, not because of any works of righteousness that we had done, but according to his mercy, through the water of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit, 
the spirit he poured out on us richly through jesus christ our savior so that having been justified by his grace we might become heirs according to the hope of eternal life the saying is sure i desire that you insist on these things so that those who have come to believe in god may be careful to devote themselves to good works these things are excellent and profitable to everyone but avoid stupid controversies genealogies dissensions and quarrels about the law for they are unprofitable and worthless after a first and second admonition have nothing more to do with anyone who causes divisions since you know that such a person is perverted and sinful being self-condemned final messages and benediction when i send artemis to you or tychicus do your best to come to me at nicopolis for i have decided to spend the winter there make every effort to send zenos the lawyer and apollos on their way and see that they lack nothing and let people learn to devote themselves to good works in order to meet urgent needs so that they may not be unproductive all who are with me send greetings to you greet those who love us in the faith grace be with all of you proverbs chapter 26 verses 18 through 19 like a maniac who shoots deadly firebrands and arrows so is one who deceives a neighbor and says i am only joking well this has been the word of god and the word of life thanks be to god and we'll see you tomorrow